Okay, I don't know how much time I have on this phone here to record, but I just wanted to show some people how to make some boilies, pop-ups. Uh, my first batch, I had none that floated. I added too much different types of liquids, and I think that messed up the egg, which is what causes these things to float, along with the gluten uh, flour that you use. And you can see here, these ones are darker. They're grapes that I rolled. I did some grape jello, and well, we'll start with this. Um, and you can see the difference in the color. Let me turn the light on. Um, you can see a difference in the colors. Um, I know the lighting is not too good here, but the left side's obviously darker than the right, um, and. As you can see, it's kind of flat on one side. That's the side that I baked them in uh, in the microwave. But they're um, a lot lighter. Um, I have some other ones over here. This one here is a little darker, so it's still got fluid in it. And so that one could use maybe a few seconds more. But it probably with drying, it, 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 may, it may work. Um, you can usually tell if it's lighter, you know it's going to float. If it's got weight to it, it's, it's going to sink. I usually do like 8, 9, 10 of the smaller ones on a small um, uh, salad plate. Just because um, when you microwave a larger plate, the heat doesn't distribute evenly as well. And sometimes the plate will cook more than the boilies and I noticed that with the last batch I did where I did about 40 of them maybe 50 and I got 10 to float out of 50 this time I've gotten a whole lot more to float um, these ones here are questionable I haven't tested them yet but the first one I did it floated perfectly fine so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these in the microwave which my microwave on here looks like it needs cleaned out and we're going to go ahead and I got to add a 30 seconds button and um, they'll cook and they'll get, they'll expand and there should be moisture on the plate if they cook right. Now what I did was, I'm going to turn a little light on it here so you can see. I used a grape flavor, I used the whole packet um, and then I used, I got all my carp cooking supplies down there. <laughs> um, I used King Arthur's um, whole wheat flour, which has gluten in it, but what also stood out was that it had 14% um, protein, which is going to be good for the fish anyway. So I primarily used um, King Arthur flour, and I did about um, two, uh, three handfuls of the King Arthur's flour, and then I did one handful of panko um, Japanese style breadcrumbs. Um, and I added two eggs to the mixture as well in a mixing bowl and just kind of mixed everything together. Um, the eggs that I used were not just regular normal sized eggs, I used jumbo eggs. I found that that it's better to start off a little bit more wet. You can always add more whole wheat flour because it's the gluten that helps it float and then it's also the egg that helps it float. Let's go ahead and see what we have over here and see if we've got that lighter texture. Ah, yes. There we go. You can see here they're a little squishy, a little warm. I left them in there, so... It's definitely, um, you can hear it. See, it sounds like bread, you know. You come over here and you can compare it to the ones I just rolled and you can see the difference. And this is how you know it floats. If it still keeps this um, color, you've got um, way too many other flavors. You've got too many wet flavors in your boilies. Um, you primarily just want to use the egg to get it to get it wet so that it'll stick together. Mostly where your flavor, where you want your flavors to come in, 
is um, with the dry ingredients. That's where you want your flavors. That's why you use the Jello packets. Now, I also used a few drops of vanilla extract because that also enhances the flavor, I believe. And um, any extract really will help it out. I mean, if you do like a pineapple flavored jello or you know grape jello like i did and you want to get a little bit of strawberry you can make grape you know strawberry grape and just do i would just do a couple of drops you know two or three drops maybe four or five drops but i wouldn't go anything past that you don't want to like spill a bunch in there otherwise you're going to ruin it um you can also do corn oil um which is good if you're going to do um you get you if you want to plaster size with your your you know your cream of corn but do not use a lot of cream of corn, especially since you're putting two eggs in it already. Um, it all depends on how much, you know, flour you put in there. But that should be your two primary ingredients is the flour and the egg. Um, and you can see here that this is really squishy. It's not sticking to my fingers that, that much. You can see it sticks a little bit. It's going to stick. I don't care what anybody tells you on YouTube about making boilies. If it doesn't stick to your skin at all, it's going to be too dry. It's going to stick to your skin just because you put the jello packet in there and it's got sugar in it. So it's going to stick, um, no matter how much flour you add to it. Um, but you don't want it so sticky to where you can't get it off your fingers, um, where you get chunks. When you got chunks stuck to your, to your hands, that's a problem. But when you just got a thin layer sticking to your hand, that's what you're looking for. That's when you stop adding the flour. Well, guys, I uh, hope this helped. And um, I'm going to upload this to my channel. I don't have too many videos, fishing videos, but I'm planning on doing more and um, eventually starting my own YouTube channel. Um, but I, I seriously felt like people just really didn't show, you know, or tell you very much about making these boilies that float. And just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and just throw one in here. You can see that thing just floats right on the top. No problem. So, um, and I just grabbed the random one on this plate. So, like I said, that's the key. Wheat and flour. And um, eggs. All right.